The Oklahoma City Thunder got a big win over the Denver Nuggets tonight in the Paycom Center. SGA goes for a triple-double. Darius Baisley comes in clutch off the bench again. Lou Dort blitzes in four threes and so much more. We're going to cover it all on the Locked on Thunder podcast, on the Locked on Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder podcast, on Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. Email the show, LO Thunder Pod gmail.com. On today's show, we're going to recap the game against the Denver Nuggets as the Thunder take on the reigning MVP, Nikola Jokic, and SGA boasts a triple double. Lou Dort hits four threes, and the Thunder play probably their best game of the season, and they're getting hot at the right time in this season. The show is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is a new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying or subscriptions you do not want or need, and can even negotiate better deals on the ones you want to keep. So we start with this game overview that we always do in the Thunder or without Mike Muscala tonight. He was out due to rest, and it's likely that Derek Favors is out tonight against the Suns uh, in the second night of a back-to-back. That's how the Thunder have been operating this season. They would you know, kind of rest one on one night and rest the other veteran big on the other. And so if they continue this pattern, which there's no – guarantee that they will but if they do continue this pattern it'll be interesting to see who starts in this game mark said that that you know basely could be an option to start long term even if even if it's not permanent just kind of a spot starter for basely so seeing who they kind of want to insert in that starting group will be interesting to see if favors does rest tonight against the suns this is going to be interesting to see if they also put mike muscala in the starting lineup i think that a uh, lineup of sga josh giddy lou dort jerry and muscala could be probably their best offensive unit. So something to watch for tonight as the day progresses, the Thunder will not have to release a injury report until 1.30 local time uh, because of the back-to-back. Now, of course, they can always do it earlier, but that's when the league makes them submit it to us. So we'll have word on that here shortly. And for the Nuggets, Bo Bo was out. PJ Dozier was out. Jamal Murray was out. Michael Porter Jr. was out. And Marcus Howard was out. Aaron Gordon was in and Jermichael Green was in. They were both listed as questionable before the game. The Thunder start out with SGA, Lou Dort, Josh Giddy, Jerry, and Derek Favors. The Nuggets start out with Monte Morris, Will Barton, Jeff Green, and Aaron Green, and Aaron, uh, of course, Gordon, and Nikki Leokic. Now, how in the world did the Thunder win this game? This was a big win for this team. They had a ton of great energy to start this game. And for the first time all season, they started strong. That's been the issue so far, is their lack of energy to start games, even going back to the Memphis game this week. You would think as you enter a game against Memphis where they beat you by 73 points the last time out, you got embarrassed. You had the worst loss in NBA history that celebrates its 75th year this year, the worst loss in history, right? You would think that that's a game where they'd come out of the gates firing and they did not. They got down big early in Memphis, but tonight they really did a good job of coming out of the gate strong in Oklahoma city to put into perspective. In the first half, the Thunder shot 55% from the floor. In the second quarter, the Thunder shot 64% from the floor. And in the second half, they cooled off, shooting 34% from the floor. Oklahoma City once led by 23 points, and, and that, a lot of us do that second quarter and how uh, good this team played. I will give the Thunder credit, though, uh, because they got out early. They got out big against Denver, and Denver made a run. Uh, their their secondary unit came in and Mike Malone made a point to not put his starters back in because they didn't earn the right to come back in. He said after the game, but they made a run, got it to 10 points against Oklahoma city and the thunder extended their arm and kept them at an arm's length. And that's very tough to do for a younger team. Who's led by these young stars. Kenny hustle helps that a lot. Derek favors helps that a lot. All these veterans help that a lot. But when you're mainly ran by SGA, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, these early 20 to teenagers, they close them closing out games this strong as they have this last kind of two weeks, you know, this two week period is big for the, and it's big for their development. In this game, the Thunder did a great job of coming out strong and finishing this game as a, as a whole, the Denver Nuggets only led by uh, five at one point, And they only led in this game once 
There's two lead changes, four times this game was tied. The Thunder shot 44% from the floor in total, 23% from, from three, 84% at the line. Denver shot 39% from the floor, 29% from deep, and 57% from the line. The Thunder won the rebounding battle uh, 66 to 51. They won the turnover battle at 11 apiece, and Oklahoma City won points in the paint 62 to 36. They won second chance points 16 to 7, and they won fast break points 11 to 9. And you know it's a big thing that I've been harping on is fast break points. When you have a young team, when you have a versatile team, that's how I believe this roster is constructed to win games. You're young, you're versatile, you're fast. You have to push the pace. And when they do that, they oftentimes win. No different tonight as they win the second, they win the uh, fast break points 11 to 9. Second chance points also great for them 16 to 7. Four Nuggets scored double figures. Jokic, though, was held to 13 points, three assists, and seven rebounds. And he looked like he didn't want to be there. And the Thunder took advantage of this. That there's no reason why the reigning MVP, one of the best players in this sport, in 24 minutes against, the, against this Oklahoma City team and this Oklahoma City uh, roster that's so undersized, so undermanned at that position, limited him to 13 points, three assists, and seven rebounds. And for him, that's not a good night in the office. It's just not. The Thunder had six double-digit scores, six of them. It was a really good team game from the Thunder and a really good win, and they're really rounding into four. Now, with every win this season, as we anticipated another Thunder tanking year, with every passing win, people start to hit the freakout button. Well, what levers are they going to pull this time? Al Horford is not here to send him home. SGA is healthy. I, I don't want to be hyperbolic over one win over the Denver Nuggets, but they did look good, right? And one win, one game is not going to change the course of a franchise whenever you're looking at it from this perspective of tanking versus not tanking. But the Thunder have to make a choice, though, pretty soon uh, because they're going to be stuck in the middle ground before too long if they keep this up. They're a game off of where they were last year pace-wise, even while moving on from Al Horford, while moving on from what little George Hill provided in his time there because he got hurt, of course, with that thumb injury. And if you have another year we have a setback in the draft and you get, instead of a top three pick, get pick six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then you start really riding that mediocre or on the on the bad end of mediocre streak that you do not want to ride in. So uh, we'll see what levers they can pull. I think that it's pretty easy, in my opinion. I think that while SGA has a triple-double, while Lou Dort has four threes, while Josh Giddy plays well, uh, in order to stave off those runs we talked about in the, in the middle part of the third quarter, in order to win and close games, you need Kenny Hustle, you need Muscala, you need these veterans, and you can easily trade Kenny Hustle. And even if you lose value on Kenny Hustle, the value comes by improving your own draft pick. That's the big value in that trade, not whatever you get sent back uh, for Kenny Hustle. Uh, it, trading away Kenny Hustle would be simply addition by subtraction, and whatever that team gave you for him is just icing on top. And Mike Muscala is a guy that's dedicated to this franchise. He was crying last year at the exit interview because he loves this franchise, this state, so much. If you sent him home as you did last year, he would understand. And so you you pull those two levers and then you see where you're at. And I think that at the end of the day, this team's a fun, scrappy team, and we all love the young players that are playing for this team right now, but uh, they'll struggle to close games without those veterans, without those Derek Favors, Kenny Hustle, Mike Muscala veterans. So it doesn't take uh, doing anything radical with your young players. It just takes uh, limiting who they have on the floor to sell them down because we see stretches where they look young and discombobulated, and it happens over and over again in these big spots. And so without those veterans – they lose more games, and if that's the direction they want to go, then so be it. You also get to a point where you come down this path of winning close games, winning competitive games, and SGA turning into triple-double, and Josh Giddy having a run this week where at one game he has 18 rebounds, another game he's shooting lights out, and in this game he's just a solid overall player. What well, you think? Maybe they should add. Maybe they should go for Sabonis right now because – if you in your mind right now are envisioning Sabonis as a player that fits this roster perfectly, why not go do it right now? Who's to say that down the line you're going to have an option like Sabonis? You're, it's always rolling the dice on who is and is not available at any given time on the open market. The trade for, which is how the Thunder are going to acquire stars. They're either going to acquire stars through the trade market or through the draft. And the draft pick gets worse in the wrong direction with each passing win. And the Thunder pretty soon need to lay out their defined path of what they want to do. And we saw last year how important one game is. Go back to that last Clippers game, the last game of the year. Poku goes off. They win the game. They probably shouldn't win. The Clippers were tanking as well, trying to trying to kind of manipulate playoff seating. 
It changes what you're drafting. Every game's important. Every game matters in the NBA season, no matter if you're trying for a championship or trying for the top overall pick. And this year's draft class, well, it's good, and I like it, and we're going to talk about it this week, and we're going to talk about it forever you know, until the draft actually comes. It's not as good as last year's draft class. It's not as deep as last year's draft class in terms of getting a blue-chip prospect. Now, Sam Press is a great talent evaluator, and there is some talent in this draft going deep into the draft. So you're going to get a good basketball player, but the further away you get from the top three, the further away you get from a blue-chip prospect. And last year's draft class went six, seven, eight deep. This year's draft class, not so much in that blue-chip prospect category. So the Thunder have to decide who they are. And after this fun week of basketball, where each and every game, going back to that Pelicans game, going back to that Grizzlies game, this game, each game has been incredibly fun to watch and has been exciting about what the future is, is building in Oklahoma City. I can listen and hear out either argument. And I think that right now, I don't envy Sam Presti's position right now. Because if he wanted to go for it and go trade for Sabonis, I could make the case to defend that. If he wanted to uh, pull that lever of trading away Kenny Hustle and just trying to get him out of town, that way he's not playing and helping this team win anymore, and you're losing and, and bettering your draft pick, I can defend that as well. So you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place if you're Sam Presti. But one thing I can always defend is the Calm app. And what I love about the Calm app is that, you know what makes LeBron James King James? It's his sleep. That's right. Sleep is his superpower. Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation. Uh, and has teamed up with LeBron James to bring you the power of sleep. When it comes to athletes, we tend to focus on the physical fitness, but there's another side of the game that's just as important, and that's mental health. Calm, the number one app for sleep and meditation, has teamed up with LeBron James to help you train your mind and become the championship version of yourself. LeBron and Calm know that your mind is like any other muscle in your body, but you don't have to be a world champion to learn how to use it and how to train it. Calm can help you train your brain to fall asleep, better reduce stress, and perform at your best, just like King James. For LeBron, sleep is a critical part of his mental health routine, as he says, quote, getting good sleep and finding time to rest is one of the most valuable things I can do for my body and mind. From the sound of rain falling on leaves to bedtime sleep stories, calm puts me to sleep within minutes, which means I wake up ready for any challenge, unquote. So if you head to calm.com slash lockdown NBA for a limited time, you'll get 40% off a calm premium subscription with calm you'll have access to nature scenes that LeBron loves like rain on leaves and so much more like sleep stories and meditations. So you can be ready for any challenges that life throws your way. And again, for limited time only our listeners can join LeBron James in using calm and get a 40% discount on a calm premium subscription. That's calm.com slash locked on NBA. So go unlock the content to help you focus, erase stress and sleep better. Get started right now. At calm.com, locked on NBA. That's calm.com slash locked on NBA. We are back on Locked On Thunder on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Royals. I should say hello, Thunderpod, but you can also follow Locked On Royals if you want to, of course. Uh, I want to tell you right now, thank you for making us your first listener every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Subscribe for free across all platforms, including the platform of YouTube. And for your second listen of the day, go check out Lockdown Bets. They're winning you money each and every day as they give you free winners from Lee Sterling and your boy Q. We're back here on the Lockdown Thunder podcast, and we got to talk about SGA. His triple-double in this game, 27 points, 12 assists, 11 rebounds, his second career triple-double, a block, a steal. Still can't get it going from three so far. 0 for 7 from three. 7 for 7 of the stripe, though, and that was a good indicator for him of getting downhill. And sure, he did shoot seven threes, but eventually he did get back to attacking downhill and getting to the rim where he shot 41% from the floor, a plus 19 on this game. And it was just fun to watch him create. Uh, we, we kind of get very caught up in Trey Mann's creation because Trey Mann's new and shiny and Skittles and everything else that you throw around the word of Trey Mann. Uh, but in this game, SGA created for himself a ton. And of course, off of creating for himself, it branches out to 
creating for others. His defenses began to key, of course, solely on SGA. So he was fantastic in this game. He played at an all-star level. Uh, and the all-star game, uh, it's it's a lot that goes into that voting system and it goes into who makes it and doesn't make it. But SGA is playing at an all-star level. Now, his basketball reference page, you go there right now and, and you're going to uh, see a slight difference in numbers, of course, because he's trying those step back threes. He's trying different things. His efficiency is not there, right? Last year, he shot 50% from the floor. This year, he's shooting 41% uh, from the floor. Last year, he shot 41% from three. This year, he's shooting 28% from three. And a lot of that goes to, while it's only one more attempt per game, it goes to the difficulty of attempts. Last year, he was being very conservative on when he shot threes and only shooting threes that he knew uh, he could make for the most part. This year, He's trying different things with that step back, that side step. And he's trying to create offense for himself and trying to create offense for his team. And that's bringing down his efficiency, but in the long run, it's promoting his game overall as he scores 21 points per game this year, down from 23 points per game. So the, the fact that people will look at this box score and judge him in these 27 games that he's kind of lesser than what he was last year. Remember, voting starts on uh, Christmas Day. That will hurt him. The fact that the team is not in the play-in or the playoffs or whatever, that will hurt him as well. But in general, these last few stretches here, these last couple weeks, he's playing on an all-star clip, and we surely hope that that continues to build on itself. One thing that's building is Darius Baisley. Now, I don't want to say that building Black Baisley is back, but Darius Baisley uh, certainly is looking a lot better. 17 points, one for three from three, 63% from the floor, 11 rebounds and assists, two blocks, and he played 27 minutes this game. He played the fifth most minutes on the team in this one, even though he came off the bench. You know, sometimes it's just as simple as not having your name called in the PA announcer, right? Where it takes the pressure off you from a fan point of view because fans are no longer beating down the door from the stop starting basically because they've already stopped starting him while also not realizing, hey, this guy's still playing a lot of minutes. Like he's still playing basically the same role. It's just, it happens in different sequences now. And then also he's being put in a better position. I mean, if you've listened to the show before, you know that whenever I took over in May 2020, I was screaming and screaming and screaming for Darius Baisley to play a small ball five, especially during that Rockets playoff series. I think that that's his best position in the NBA is small ball five. And he's getting to do that more in the second group, and you're seeing him succeed more with that second group as he gets put in that position. I think that a simple flip flip of the starting group where you ask uh, JRE to play power forward and you ask Baisley to play center would do a world of good for both parties involved even. But 17 points on 11 rebounds tonight in what was it, 27 minutes for Darius Basley? You can't ask for better than that. He's played another perfect game, and it's only been two straight perfect games, right? I remember that's a big step in the right direction for him because in the starting lineup, he could never stack success onto success. It would always be a great game here, two really bad ones, a good one here, two mediocre ones, a terrible one over here, and then a great one to the left, right? In this scenario, we've seen him progress very steadily, and see him build upon each stepping stone and each success stone that he's had with that bench unit. So that's been very encouraging, but it's still only been three games, and two of them were really great these last couple. Don't want to rush anything to starting him. And again, tonight's starting lineup could be a little bit iffy because you might rest favors, and I don't know if you want to start Mike Muscala. Uh, but I really like what we're seeing from Baisley in that bench role. You can see that he's gaining more confidence in himself. You can see he's taking pressure off himself. And he's allowing himself to rely on his athletic ability. This is a supreme athlete. This is a lengthy player that can dribble, that can, of course, pass, that can shoot, that can drive at the rim and slash. He had the putback dunk in this game. He was incredible tonight, and he had a ton of praise from fans who were crucifying him two weeks ago, right? And that's how fans work. That's how fans operate. I'm just saying even, even the most staunchly haters of Darius Baisley had to give him props tonight, and that's how good he was in this game. So I think that Baisley should be on the bench unit for about a month or two at least and just continue to build on this, continue to grow as a player. And again, as I said yesterday, the better Baisley does is the better for the Thunder. Now, it's not only a one-to-one -one correlation because he's on the roster right now. It's because when you think about making moves at the deadline, who are you going to throw in there in addition to picks that teams will want? Because even, say, Sabonis, right? Even Kenny Hustle for Sabonis, and you know, Kenny Hustle picks for Sabonis. Do the Pacers really want Kenny Hustle if they're going to signal a full-on rebuild? What does that bring for them? Now, if Rick Carlisle wants to just move one of the bigs and then kind of work around the other and 
try to be a contender next year, yeah, Kenny Hustle would help him a lot. But in general, you do not have very many sweeteners to throw into those draft picks. And we've seen last offseason, draft picks alone cannot get you where you want to be in these trade packages. So we'll see what Baisley can build on in this game today. We're playing again today on the second night of a back-to-back. But I do want to say right now, we're good friends over at BetOnline.ag. BetOnline has you covered for the holiday season, folks. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Football continues its march through the college bowl season and the pro football playoffs. BetOnline remains your number one spot for sport action this season, so head over to the website or use your mobile device. Sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the code Locked On and receive your bonus from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait. Take advantage right now. These amazing offers available for the 2021 season. But online has the fastest and best way to bet on all of your sports. So don't wait. Take advantage right now with these amazing offers with our code Locked On for a 50% welcome bonus. Your first deposit, a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. But online the DG, but online where the game starts. I'm going to say right now, but your friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar is a fantastic protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Go to BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your next order. It's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. All of them are covered in 100% real chocolate. There's amazing flavors such as coconut, coconut brownie, cookies and cream, cherry, peanut butter, brownie, mint brownie, raspberry. There's just all these great flavors. My personal favorite flavor is cookies and cream. They are great especially as stocking stuffers as Christmas is coming up. They're great with protein and they're low in carbs, low in sugar, low in all the bad stuff and high in protein. And if you love those marshmallowy treats around this holiday season, you can get Built Bar Puffs. They're light, fluffy, and marshmallowy through and through with different flavors, all covered in chocolate. Tasty. It's so good, so tasty that you will not believe it's filled with protein. BuiltBar.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off your next order. Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15, 15% off of your next order. Make sure you check them out and get them today for the holiday season and beyond. They, of course, give you energy to get through that last-minute shopping or whatever else you're doing around the holidays. So make sure you go check them out. Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15%, 15 off your next order. Thank you again for making Lockdown Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Subscribe for free across all platforms, including the new platform of YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. And email the show, LOThunderPod.com. And so we're going to continue on with the show today as Josh Giddy turns in a 14-point night with three assists, five rebounds, two steals, a block, and 45% from the floor. A really good night from him. I was encouraged by his ability to continue to score after playing well against Memphis the other night. Lou Dort had four threes on 10 attempts, six rebounds, played great defense on the way to 15 points and an assist. And Derek Favors had 20 minutes tonight as a starter, 62% from the floor, six rebounds, two assists in this one. Uh, he played well on the offensive end, especially, and, and he played all right defensively. Of course, uh, you, whenever, you, whenever you limit Jokic as a team to 13 points, you've got to give credit to all your big men that played in this one. They even put Isaiah Roby in with the two minutes and 30 minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds he played to kind of uh, shadow Jokic, which of course was his first big assignment last year, if you remember last year, as favorite scored 10 points on this one. But if you remember last year, uh, as Roby got more and more run at that small ball five, his first big test was defending Jokic as a small ball five. And he did that uh, poorly his first time out, but every matchup since then last year, he improved on Jokic. Small sample size tonight in two minutes, so you don't want to break all that down. But uh, it was good to see Roby back out there uh, and running around as the OKC Blue, by the way, lost the uh, G League showcase today to the Blue Coats, I believe, who they lost to. Uh, to lose the showcase. So they'll get back to their normal G League season in January, which will put their schedule mirroring NBA schedules where they're playing more often, playing multiple times a week. So you're going to start seeing these players get shuffled back and forth really soon from the Thunder to the Blue. And again, the Thunder wrap up their uh, slate before Christmas tonight against the Suns, and they're going to have uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off. They'll be back the day after Christmas. Jerry, though, put up 14 points, nine rebounds and assists, a steal, one for three, shooting from three. Trey Mann scored seven points, four rebounds, 33% from the floor, one for four from three. Bet of the day, I had Denver minus six and a half. That did not hit at all. I had SGA as the money ball pick to lead the team in three-pointers made. It was actually Lou Dort who had four. The MVP of tonight is SGA with that triple-double. Gotta love what SGA brought to the table. Coming up, you're going to have the OKC Thunder Christmas wish list episode, and we're going to grade each and every Thunder member this season and, of course, we're going to recap the Suns game as well. So stay tuned for all of that and so much more 
on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Until then, be good and be good to one another.